comes and ministers the word of the Lord to us. God bless you, Pastor Rick. Praise God. Uh, <clears throat> well, anyway, it's, a, it's an honor and privilege to be here tonight, and uh, uh, hopefully we look forward to hearing a, a good word from the Lord, and I hope, hopefully uh, I've heard the Lord in clarity on this tonight. Uh, but like I said, I'd like to give uh, honor to the pastor, uh, my pastor, uh, Rick Hilgero. And uh, I just thank the Lord for his heart. Uh, he has a heart for people. And uh, he has a heart for ministry. He has a heart for getting people involved in ministry. And that's always been his vision. That's always been his desire. And um, so like, <clears throat> like he said at the end of his presentation a while ago, if you're looking for a church home, where uh, you want to be involved, this is the church to come to. And uh, so I'd like to uh, welcome everyone on the air tonight, the, everyone that's here tonight. And we just ask, I ask you, you to keep me in prayer, and hopefully the Lord uh, will move and, and bring a word that uh, will glorify him. Uh, I'm just going to ask everyone to bow their heads. I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, Lord Heavenly Father. And Lord, Heavenly Father, first of all, we glorify you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for another day. We thank you for the provisions that you've provided, Lord. Father God, we thank you, Lord, Heavenly Father, for <clears throat> watching over us, Lord, watching over our homes, our families, Father God. And Lord, uh, even as the pastor was saying, even in the midst of an of, uh, <clears throat> of, uh, epidemic, Father God, a pandemic, Father God, you're still king you're still lord and you're still providing lord heavenly father and lord I, I thank you lord for those that are here tonight i thank you for those that are on the air tonight lord father god i ask that you bless each and every one of them father god and those that are here tonight i ask for traveling grace and mercy father god as they uh return home tonight father god i ask that you bless them lord and i ask that no one would leave tonight father god whether here or on the air that no one would leave father god Father God, without being touched, Lord. And Father God, I, I pray for every home that's represented here, Father God, and represented on the air. Father God, I plead your blood over the ceiling, the walls, the floors of each and every home, Father. I plead your blood over every family member, Father God. And Father God, I continue to pray, Father God, that you'll meet and exceed every need, Father. And Lord, we just thank you again for another day. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Um, <clears throat> last night I, uh, I got home late and uh, I really wanted to meditate on the word. And, you know, I have a friend of mine that uh, he lives by himself. And you think, you know, that right now even, even having a family, that the pandemic can be tough on you as you try to provide for your family. But, you know, one thing that sometimes we, we look and we say, man, it's so bad or it's so tough and, and uh, but you know sometimes we we have to sometimes we have to look at others and, and see that you know as bad as we think our circumstances and our situations are there are others that are going through even tougher situations and circumstances and this friend of mine he's he lives alone and uh, you know I, I uh, he always calls me and I always go by and talk with him and and uh, he's a he's a uh, a believer and uh, he studies the word of God and and uh, he looks deep at things, and, and uh, <clears throat> in any way, he, uh, he called me last night, and he said, you know, he said, I don't, I don't know uh, what I'm feeling. And uh, he said, I don't know what I'm feeling. He said, I don't know if I'm feeling happy. I don't know if I'm feeling sad. He said, I don't know what's coming, coming down the pike. I don't know what's coming down at the end of, of this so-called pandemic. Pan pandemic, I'll get it right, pandemic. He goes, I don't know what's, what's, what, what the end is going to be. He says, but I feel that uh, <clears throat> there's some things that are not going to change. I mean, there's, there's let me get this right. There's some things that are going to change, and it, and it may not be for the good. And, uh, and I said, well, probably what you're feeling is what I'm feeling. And I said, the word that I'm feeling is anticipation. You know, we're anticipating a change but we don't know what the change is going to be. Whether good or whether bad, we, we don't know. We don't know what lies ahead. And I said, but brother, I said, you know, 
I said, whatever happens, we have to, to make sure that our foundation is built on, on the Word. Our foundation is built on the Lord. I said, if, if we continue to, to watch this stuff and you continue to, to, to put that, that stuff fo- first before God and, and you're constantly thinking about it, you know, basically you've allowed that to take the place of the Lord. And, and I mean, you know, we're going we're gonna to say it the way, they, the way it is. You know, sometimes people get so absorbed in it that they can watch that stuff 24-7. They can believe in that stuff 24-7 and basically... By and by, God gets scooted out of the equation. And as, as I was sitting there, as, uh, as uh, <clears throat> the man was doing praise and worship, a scripture came to me, and I'm going to read it really quick. It's in chapter, uh, Luke chapter 21. And if you have your Bibles, uh, turn with me to Luke chapter 21. And it's uh, starting at verse 25. Say amen when you have it. It says, And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. With perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh now you know the the scripture tells us clearly jesus is telling us clearly that these things are going to come to pass these things are going to begin to happen and you know we're not we're not only seeing an economic shaking you know we're not only seeing a uh we're uh we don't know where our economy is going to be we we're not only seeing a the structure that we've always believed in and trusted in. And sometimes we've trusted in these structures more than we've trusted in the Lord. We've trusted in our jobs more than God himself. You know, we followed after things and pleasures and, and you know, and then we make time for God whenever we want to make time for God. And, uh, <clears throat> but, the, but Jesus is telling the disciples, he's telling them straight out, look, he said men's hearts are going to fail them because they're looking after these things. In other words, they're, they're, they're looking at after these things and, and you know, people are, are, uh, are beginning to stress out and, and, uh, and I know it's tough and I'm not making light of the situation and I know that, you know, it's coming, there's coming a time in, in a lot of people's lives right now that, that you're barely making ends meet. And you know what? I know, I know how it is. I'm not working myself, but you know what? I have to trust the Lord and, and, and I, I do trust the Lord and I've seen God come through already many times already. And, you know, sometimes we think, well, I have to have a job. But you know what? We've learned, like I said, sometimes to trust in our jobs and trust in our money more than God himself. And, I, and I've, I've just learned to relax, and I've learned to wait on the Lord. And, uh, and I've seen God already provide provisions. You know, I've seen him do it over and over. And you know what? And I'm still giving, and it seems like, man, <laughs> where's this coming from? But God's still providing. And, uh, but, but, you know, like I said, I know that there's an anticipation in the air. And my message tonight is, what are you building your foundation on? Turn your Bibles to the book of uh, Matthew. Uh, excuse me, let's go to Luke chapter 6. And we're going to start at verses 47 through 49. And I'm going to tell you uh, the way this message came to me was I was doing some marriage counseling, and I was thinking about foundation, and uh, and I was thinking about you know what do most people build their marriage on, you know how is it today, you know what what are people doing to what kind of foundation are you going to build on as as you go into marriage, and uh, as I was counseling these people. You know, uh, uh, as I was going to their home, the Lord placed that on my heart. What are you building your foundation on? And let's read uh, Matthew, uh, excuse me, Luke chapter 6, starting at uh, verse 47. It says, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48, He is like a man which built a house and digged deep 
and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the, the stream beat vehemently upon the house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built his house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of the house was great. You know, and there's another translation that says the winds and the storms came, and it, and it quickly fell because it wasn't built on a firm foundation. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, as, uh, as, as, I was, as I was counseling this, this couple, you know, first of all, I, I, uh, I honored them. And I, I honored them, and I told them, I said, you know what? I said, I, I, I have to honor you too. I said, because we're living in a day where most people don't even want to have marriage counseling anymore. I said, you know, most people, I said, don't realize that marriage is a job. Marriage is tough. You know, you have to work at it. There's, there's compromise. You know, you begin to see yourself. You begin to see your spouse. But it, it's a job in progress. And you know what? They say if you can make it past the first five years, then you, then you got it whipped, you know. Well, you left the toothpaste cap off. Well, you know what? You left your toothbrush out. You know, the little things that you, when you lived by yourself, you were used to having your place in order or whatever, you know, and we all have our little uh, little things that, that, that bothered us and irked us about, you know, everybody else, you know, the, uh, your, your spouse. But, but the deal is, is that, <clears throat> you know, most people today, they don't even want to go through marriage counseling. You know, we're, we're living in a day and time, you know, uh, uh, I was listening to uh, Dr. David Jeremiah the other day, and he said he was saying that the, the marriage rate now among our young people is like 6.5%. He said people are not willing to commit to marriage anymore. He said they're not willing to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to lay down any kind of foundation. You know, and, and most people now, they get married. I'm telling you, it's, 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 they're already going in with a suspicion. Well, you know what? If I get a divorce, well, we're going to draw up a prenup, you know, and, and you're going to agree to this and you're going to agree to that. Or if it doesn't work out, well, we'll just get a divorce, you know. They, they already have that mindset. And, and a lot of times, you know, they, they, uh, they'll say, well, you know what? Uh, if it doesn't work out, then I'll just have to go on. They're not even willing to work it out anymore. And, and uh, you know, and, and basically we're living in the day and, and, and time where I've already seen two marriages that the person performing the marriage, he's, he was ordained through the male. You know, they, it, was, it was a male in or, ordination. And even these pastors, and, and I'm not, I, I, like I said, I'm not criticizing. At least they're, they're trying to do something right and they're trying to do it under the, the eyes of the Lord. But, but they're doing it. They're, they're, they're getting their credentials through the mail, and you look at their, their lives, and, and most of them don't even go to church. You know, they have no kind of Christian values in their life. You know, one guy, he came to me, and he asked me, and I used to teach him in Sunday school, and, I, and he came and asked me, and he goes, man, he goes, can I talk to you about performing marriage, you know, through, uh, for, for a couple? And I said, sure, you know, let's meet and have lunch, and anyway, we began to talk, and and as we were talking, you know, he said, well, you know, I want to do, a, do a, a, a marriage. And he said, I've been ordained. And I said, who ordained you? I said, I said were, well, did a pastor ordain you? I said, have you talked to your pastor about it? And uh, he said, no. He goes, I don't even go to church. <laughs> and I said, say that again? And then I said, well, what, let me ask you a question. I said, do you honestly know the foundations for a good marriage? I said, do you know what it takes? Do you know what the Word of God says concerning this? I said, do you know that when you do it? I mean, I, I said, this is a commitment unto, unto the Lord. You know, the Bible says a, a threefold cord is not easily broken. It's you, your spouse, and God. You're making a covenant, and, and you're going into it. That's what I'm saying is that nowadays there's no foundation. And, the, and you know, people go in not even realizing that, look, I'm getting married under, under the covenant of the Lord, but they forget God, and God gets taken out of the equation. And, I, and, and this guy, as he was talking, and I said, are you married? He said, no. He said, I'm living with somebody. And, and this is the way, basically, <laughs> this is the way it is nowadays. I, and, and, you know, uh, somewhere along the line, uh, people seem to be getting further and further away from the Lord. And like I said, uh, it's, it, I really believe because of, of, 
of everything that we're going through. You know, people will even look at the, the economy and they'll say, well, man, if I can barely take care of myself, how can I take care of a spouse? If I can, if I can barely take care of a spouse, how am I going to take care of children? And so people basically don't even want to commit anymore. Or let's look at the other side of it because the, the Bible says that basically men will be lovers of themselves in the last day. You know, well, you know what? I don't want, really want to get married until I have everything that I got, that I need. You know, I really want a boat. I really want a house. And I really do too, but, you know, <laughs> I want a four-wheel drive truck. You know, I, I, I want this. I want that. And you know what? I just decided that, you know, my husband or my wife may not, you know, be in agreement with it or she may not have the money or I might as well get it now, you know. What the heck? Everybody's getting married later on in life, and and I'm not beating. I'm not here tonight to beat marriage, but I'm just saying there seems not to be a foundation that's laid anymore. There seems not to be a, a firm foundation, and and we're seeing the results of it: quick marriage, quick divorce. You know, and and uh, you know, people will ask me. Uh, I, I'm like Pastor Rick. I, sometimes I don't think that I'm necessarily always like to do perform marriages. I don't mind doing them. But here's one requirement that when I do, do a marriage, I require them to have counseling. Because, and, because when I do counseling, I see where their commitment is. And, and, and actually, you know, when, when I do counseling, I ask them questions that make, make them look at the other individual. And, you know, as I was counseling last night, uh, you know, we, we, we actually built a foundation off gender. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, you know, God created a helpmate for man because he said that it's not good that man lives alone. But, at, but after we, you know, we asked, you know, I had them ask, answer questions, you know, what, what is your characteristics, what are the, are the characteristics of the individual that you want to marry? What personality traits do you see in that individual that, that's drawing you to that individual? Or what, do you, what would you require of him and her? And I had them answer these questions separately. And you know what? It makes them think. But I also, like I said, I built a foundation off the Word of God. But as we were getting into it, I already saw that they were having problems with their family. The daughters, his daughter and her daughter, they were already, they were, it was already causing conflict. And as I was talking, it started coming out. And I said, now, now you're going to see why it's so important to build your foundation on the Word of God. I said, because a lot of times what happens is you give him your opinion and he gives you his opinion. And, and you know what? The, the Scripture talks about what is, what's inside of a man. It says the, that the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God. That's in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But it says that the Holy Spirit searches the deep things of God, it says, and reveals the kingdom of heaven unto us. It says, but what does a man know except the spirit that's inside of a man? I said, you know what? We form opinions, and we think we're right a lot of times, but we don't build our foundation on the Word of God. What does the Word of God say? I said, you both say you're Christians. And they said, well, we don't know. And, and that's, that's the problem nowadays is that, you know what? We don't have enough Christians committed to the Word of God. And, and you know what? People are looking for answers. They're looking for answers. And, you know, I, I, as I was sitting there, you know, and, and believe me, everything that they said and everything that we backed up with Scripture, you know, one of them said, well, I'm looking for a person that's not selfish. But then she said, I don't want his daughter at, at the marriage because she doesn't like me. I said, well, didn't you just say you're not, you're not looking for somebody that's selfish? I said, what do you call that? I said, do you not know that a father's love for his daughter, how much a father and a, a mother loves a son usually? I said, do you not know that, that maybe, and he was shaking his head yes the whole time. I said, but listen, this is, this, this is why it's so important to build your foundation on the word of God. I said, it, it takes your opinion out of, out of the equation. I said, there's an answer to everything in the word of God. I said, but the deal is that now, I said, you're, you're doing it right. I said, you're, coven, you're coming under a covenant with God Almighty. I said, but now you have to build your foundation on the Word of God. I said, so now you need, to, you need to start getting in the Word of God. I said, this is why the Lord bought you together. I said, now, I said, you have your families. I said, your mission field is your families. I said, and instead of getting angry at one another and already starting to bicker, 
I said, you need to come together and you need to start reading the word of God. I said, and you need to start praying. I said, you need to build your foundation. And, uh, and well, anyway, and, and before it was all said and done, we wound up praying for, for, for the, both the daughters. But I'm just saying, you know, uh, <coughs> the, this is the, the reality of the world that we live in today. Every house, every house, uh, Every house begins with a foundation. The strength of the whole structure is dependent on the foundation. What is the foundation for this life? What is your foundation for this life and for your hope of eternal life? What foundation are you building for this life? Is it, is it you know, you, you, know, you want to live in with somebody, you know, you're, you're married, and, and sometimes, you know, even though we go to church, a lot of times, man, we can get into it, and I'm talking about disagreements, you know, or, or, you know, we don't see eye to eye, but the deal is, is that a lot of times we're not, if we're not careful, we toss the word of God out, and, we, and it begins to, to be our own self-centeredness. It begins to be a pride issue. Well, no, no, you're not going to do it that way. You're going to do it my way. Well, you know, but what does the word of God say? Where is the foundation? What is, your, what, is, what is your life built on? What is the foundation of your home built on? You know, I... I I'm pretty sure that most of the people in here that I, I know there's a hardcore group that comes in here and I know that, man, you know, you want more and you want that foundation built right. But I'm saying is that, you know, a lot of times we, we can go to church and we can go through the motions and we can, we can even serve and we can become members and we can do this and we can do that. But basically you go home and your life is still, it's not built, it's not operating under the foundation of God. It's not operating on, on, the, on the proper principles. You know, Luke was telling us here, it says uh, that one man, he dug deep and laid his foundation on the rock. He dug deep. And you know what? In order to build a, a good foundation, you know, they have to, you know, they, they have to, to build deep. I don't know if you've ever seen them build in, in, a, in, a, in a chemical plant. Man, they'll dry those, they'll dry those pylons, I mean, Many feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, they'll drive them deep into the earth and, and as they're building their structures upon these foundations. And, I, and I'm talking about, you, you see the, the, the foundation going in, and I'm telling you, you see the hose, and, and it's hard to believe that these big structures are built on this foundation. But if it wasn't built on a strong foundation, then, it, that, then it, when, whenever uh, the, the pressure of the plant or the, the winds or the storms that, that come in this area, if it wasn't built on a strong foundation, then it w those, uh, <clears throat> those structures wouldn't last very long. But like I said, Luke said that, the, that uh, this man dug deep. And, you know, in order to build a good house, you have to dig deep. You have to make sure that the foundation is built right. You know, a lot of times because it isn't built right, the foundation will crack. And, then, you know, then you have to come back and you have to add structure to it. But the deal is, is that, you know what, a wise man will take time and he'll begin to look at all the attributes of what it takes to build a strong foundation. You know, the scripture tells us in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11, it says, Paul said, no other foundation can a man lay that which is laid and which a, no, no foundation can a man lay that which is already laid, and that is Jesus Christ. You know, we're to build on that foundation. And, you know, he, like I said, Luke said that this man dug deep and he laid his foundation on the rock. And, and the rock is Jesus Christ, but, the, but Jesus Christ is the word of God. Jesus Christ is the word of God. <clears throat> the, the scripture tells us, in, and I'm going to read this real quick. Go to Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 20. And say amen when you have it. It says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous, ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not good fruit is, is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you'll know them. And you know, I'm sure 
some of you in here that, that study the Word of God and you've built on a firm foundation and, and you're constantly reading the Word of God, you know, you, you can basically be around an individual and you'll know who they are. You, you can actually have them come to class. And, and I'm, not, I'm not criticizing anybody. I know we all, we all start at different places. But the thing is, is that a lot of times, you know, because you study the Word of God and, and you've built your life on that foundation, you can begin to listen to people. And the true test of, of, of a Christian, the true test of, of their foundation is actually seeing what fruits they're bearing. What's coming out of their mouth? What's coming out of their life? You know, you can see the stability. You know, you can listen to them. And, and you know, <laughs> a lot of times you can tell who studied, who hasn't studied. You know, you can ask a question and, and immediately. And, you know, the Lord started doing that to me uh, a couple of years back. And, you know, I was studying, studying, studying. And I, I began to hear people speak. And then, I mean, I knew immediately where they were spiritually. So the scripture is telling us, listen, you'll, you'll be known by the fruits that come out of you. You know, if, 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 uh, if, if there's a, 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 a lot of opinion that's coming out, that's what I'm saying. A lot of times that's what happens is it's, it's the natural man that's coming out and it's not the foundation built on the Word of God. And that, that's why it's so important that we understand to build our foundation on the rock, on the Word. You know what? We should go to the Word. The Bible tells us that we're to study to show ourselves approved unto God Rightly dividing the word of truth, a worker that needeth not be ashamed. You know, what does that mean? A worker that needeth not be ashamed. They can't twist the word of God on you. They can't change it around. They can't try to manipulate you with it. You, and you're rightly dividing the word of truth. You begin to give them everything that they need when you're counseling people or when you're ministering to people or you're praying for somebody. The Holy Spirit begins to roll it out. But the deal is, is that it's not going to roll out if we haven't built our, built our foundation on the word of God. If we haven't spent time studying the Word of God and reading it, how can the Holy Spirit bring it out? You know, Logos is uh, the, the reading, the knowledge of who Christ is. You know, we begin to see who He is, and we begin to, to, to know Him and His attributes as we read the Word of God. But the Rima Word of God is whatever comes out whenever we need, whenever we need it. As, as I was ministering to these people Last night, I, the Word of God just began to roll out, and they were looking at me like, man, that's the a, that's a right answer. I said, it's not coming from me, but it's coming from the foundation that I've built in my life. I said, it, it still needs a lot of work. I said, but what's in there is what God has given you. It's not coming from me. And, and not only will, will, you know, we know that the Scripture says that there are many gifts, and not only was it being complimented by the Word, but as I was praying for them, the Lord was already showing me things in the spiritual realm. And I know that's hard for people to understand, but as you begin to walk with Christ, you know, as you begin to, to believe, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. You know, we develop our faith. We begin to, 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 uh, to, to learn the attributes of Christ. And you know what? Pretty soon we begin to mimic the attributes of Christ. It's the, the Rima word, the word that's already inside of us. It's the living word of God that actually comes out and begins to set people free. It begins to, to reveal the truth. It begins to, to give us insight. You know, and, and like I said, I told them that now you know why it's so important for you to study the word of God. As, as we were reading the scripture in, in Luke chapter 6 about the two houses, the, the similarities in, in building the houses, you look at them, the, as we were reading it, it's, they were probably built in the same location because it says the winds came and the storms came. So, so the, they both built their house in the same location. Uh, it, it doesn't say, but from outward appearances, they both could have looked alike. You know, it didn't say they were built different. One was a two-story, one was a one-story. From, from, from what we can guess by reading just that short scripture is that, you know what, maybe they were both they both appeared alike. Uh, what were the differences between the two men? One dug deep, and the other one laid no foundation. What's the characteristics of a foolish man? The Bible says that the foolish man built his house upon the sand, and basically it great was a fall. It fell quickly because it wasn't built on a firm foundation. And what are the characteristics of a foolish man? He's always in a hurry, <laughs> very impatient, looking for shortcuts. 
doesn't want to or won't listen to advice, uh, thinks his ideas are best, feels he knows all he needs to know, doesn't think things through, builds in the wrong place, you know, why would you want to build on a dry riverbed? He's not interested in learning from history, doesn't care what the Bible says. You know, I, I, uh, I was uh, counseling a couple, and, uh, and <clears throat> the wife uh, was born again. And the wife said, you know, I go to church, I have a, I, I have a strong belief in God. And, and uh, so anyway, I, I, I went to counsel them, and the husband said, I have no interest in that. <laughs> he said, I don't, I don't care for that. He said, I really don't believe he said, and I'd really rather, rather you not even ask me about that. So they were already building on the wrong foundation. You know, the, the Bible says, and, and even the scripture, you know, I, I, I question that because the scripture says, what communication does darkness have with light? You know, she should have already seen that, you know, marriage is already hard enough, and, and here you're going to marry a non-believer. And, and I'm going to tell you, their marriage did not last. That's... I mean, it wasn't built on a, on a wise foundation from the very beginning. Uh, <clears throat> so, like I said, the foolish man, he cares, cares less what the Word of God says. Uh, oh, the wise man, what did he do? Well, when he built his house, uh, when, when the wise man built his foundation, he, he dug deep. And the foolish man... He did not dig at all. He's not digging for an answer. He's not looking for an answer. He's going to give you his opinion. He's going to give you whatever he thinks. And that's, that's what causes problems sometimes in, in the foundation that we built. You know, uh, you think you know everything, and basically we know nothing at all. Uh, <clears throat> characteristics of a, of, of a wise man. He does not rush into, into constructing anything. He, he, he thinks things through. He looks at all aspects of it, but he doesn't rush. He seeks instruction. He listens to adv advice. He digs deep to lay a foundation upon the rock. Our, our lives are going to be subject, subjected. You know, uh, let's tell you what, let me. I'm going to read the uh, translation in uh, chapter. 7 of, of the book of Matthew, uh, it expounds on it a little more. Let me read it real quick. It says, starting at verse 24 of uh, the book of Matthew, it says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a fool, foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, then the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall thereof. So our life will be subject to testings. The rain will descend. Something, <clears throat> uh, something you were counting on may collapse. You know, um, a lot of people were counting on still working. You know, I, <laughs> I was uh, the last to leave, and uh, I worked two days of my final week, and I was counting on still working, and it, and it collapsed. And I, at, at first it bothered me, but, you know, I, I said, you know what? Maybe God has another plan in this. And, and you know what? You, you, I began to see the fruits of it. Uh, through that, it, it's actually brought me and my family closer together. You know, we've, we've spent time talking about the Lord. We've spent time together, you know, and that was something that maybe I, I, I didn't consider before. Uh, uh, what's another aspect of rain coming down? Uh, you may be let down by, by someone. You know, I don't know how many times that I've heard or how many times that I've read in the newspaper about people committing suicide because their boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with them. It, it's super high. It's, it's almost unheard of. Why would somebody, you know, commit suicide now because another person leaves them? There's so many people in this world now, you know. But that's actually happening. Uh, that just happened recently uh, to somebody that I knew, the family that I knew. The, the boyfriend broke up, so the, the girl shot herself. 
uh, even as Christians, you know, when the floods will come, you know, we know that a lot of times it, the enemy doesn't want us to believe in God. The enemy doesn't want us to lay our foundation on Christ. You know, the enemy doesn't want you to know the knowledge. He doesn't want you to know the Holy Spirit. He doesn't want you to walk on a firm foundation. You know, I, I used to tell people at work because they'd complain about not being able to sleep. I said, you want to get a good, good night's rest? And they said, how's that? I said, start reading your Bible. <laughs> I said, you'll fall asleep quicker than anything else. And they'd get mad at me. You know, they didn't want to hear that. They didn't want to read the Word of God as it was. A lot of them didn't. But, but anyway, uh, the, the Scripture tells us in the book of Ephesians, you don't have to turn to it, but it says we wrestle not against flesh, flesh and blood. So even as Christians, we're going to be tried and we're going to be tested. So what is your foundation built on? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Uh, we know that sometimes the enemy, his attacks can be vicious and ongoing. But you know what? You know, uh, uh, I thank God for the Holy Spirit because a lot of times we know it's the enemy. We know it's not by chance. We know it's not by circumstance that we have, we have a, a, an insight. The Holy Spirit reveals the, the plots and plans of, of the enemy. If, if we're obedient to the Word and obedient to the Lord, you know, we have revelation. We have insight. You know, we have the Lord protecting us. The enemy is sneaky and can, can come in in unexpected ways. And a lot of times you're dealing with one issue and there's an issue coming in right behind you. And you know what? And sometimes it's multiple issues. And, and sometimes it seems overwhelming. You know, that the Lord gave me that word uh, a year ago and he said, he said there's a spirit of overwhelmed. He said, and people are so, it's, it's not just fear anymore. He said, it's, they're so full of fear and paranoia that it, they're overwhelmed in the day that we live in. It's overwhelming. And, and I remember that at work, I went up, the Lord told me to go pray for an individual. And I said, I said, brother, I said, uh, I walked up to him. It was a mechanic that I knew. And I said, I said, I know there's something wrong with you. I said, you look, you look overwhelmed. And he said, oh, my God. He said, that's exactly what I feel like. I'm overwhelmed. And, and, but, but like I said, you know, <clears throat> we're living in a day and time, and, and, you know, everything now is being compounded by, by what we're coming through. The winds blew, winds of adversity. Not, you know, not all is going well. We will go through adversity. Those winds will come in. You know, uh, um, I, and I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be transparent. You know, uh, at, uh, I talk about marriage being a job. At, when I first got married, it wasn't very easy. And I remember I went to, to church, and, and you know, I, why, why do you go to church, you know? Why do you seek the Lord, you know, because we're seeking for an answer. You know, you, you want to you build your house on the, on the right foundation. I tried it my way, and it wasn't working. So I wanted to do it God's way. And I began to pray and ask the Lord to give me insight, to, to show me, to teach me how to be a good father, to teach me how to be a good husband. I began to pray that, and I remember I would go faithfully to, to, <clears throat> to a prayer meeting every morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, I would go, and I remember a lady walked in one day, didn't even know me, walked up to the pastor and asked the pastor if, uh, if she could give me a word, and she said this, she said, there's a whirlwind that is coming to your house, it's a whirlwind of destruction, and it's trying to break up your marriage, and I'm telling you, she was right on. And she said, but God said it's only for a season. She said, continue to build on your foundation. She said, it's only going to last for a season. Be encouraged. So, so basically, you know, the, uh, and I'm, I'm just going to end with this. Um, I'm going to end with this tonight. Uh, there, there's scriptures. There's all kinds of scriptures that, that we can go to. Like I said, there's, a, there's an answer in the word of God for everything. There's an answer for everything. Like I said, we can rightly divide the word of truth. You know, I'm just going to give you a couple of scriptures. Uh, John 5, 39. It says, uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. 539, Jesus said, uh, it basically, it says, search the scriptures, for they testify of me, and in them you believe you have eternal life. In other words, if you want to see how Jesus would handle a situation, 
If you, was, you want to see how Jesus would, would move in a certain situation or circumstance or healing or deliverance or whatever, Jesus says, search the scriptures for they testify of me. Romans 10, 17. You know, a lot of times we say, well, you know, I don't have faith to, to see that happen. Well, how do you build your faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of God. Proverbs 3, I'd like to read this if it's okay. Is it okay, Pastor? Proverbs chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 1 through 7. It says, My son, forget not my law. Don't forget the word of God. It says, But let thy heart keep my commandments. For length of day and long life and peace shall they add unto thee. You want to work in perfect peace? The scripture tells us, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed upon me. It says, uh, <clears throat> Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them around about thy neck. Write them upon the tablet of thy heart. So shall thy find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy paths. Need direction in your life? Do we need an answer right now? Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. You know, there's, that scripture is pretty, pretty straightforward. A lot of times we want to be wise in our own eyes. And then it says depart from evil. Why? <laughs> because that evil will bring a distraction that I actually take your eyes off the Lord. We're to depart from evil, walk away from it. Jeremiah 33 and 3 it says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Let me read this real quick. Colossians 3, 16. second here. Colossians 3.16, it says, Let the word of God, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in, the heart, in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. You want an answer? You want to know how to do things? Let the word of God dwell in you. Uh, and I got one more. Isaiah, go to Isaiah uh, chapter 55. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. It says, For the, as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and makes it bring forth in bud, it, it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto I sent it. You know, the Bible tells us that life and death are in the power of the tongue, and we're going to eat the fruit thereof. You know, why do we want to declare something that's not of God over our lives, over our children, over our circumstances, and over our situations? And, and you know, tonight I, I just want to leave you, you know, with these words, and, and hopefully, it, you know, maybe something you've heard tonight has encouraged you. And, uh, but I, I just want to encourage you, you know, don't try it on your own. You know, uh, Jesus said, I'll give you a peace that the world knows not of. There's, only, there's a peace that Jesus can give. And, and you know what, regardless of what it looks like, regardless of the circumstances or the situations, only Jesus can give you this peace. So basically, I, I just want you to be encouraged, and I, and I want to encourage you to begin to seek the Lord with your whole heart. The Bible says, seek the Lord with your whole heart. It says, when you seek Him with your whole heart, not a quarter of your heart, not a half of your heart, but when you seek Him with your whole heart, you'll find Him. So basically, I, I want to encourage you to seek him. I want you to, to begin to lay your foundation. And you know what? And, and, and be encouraged tonight. And I hope the word of God has encouraged you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.